Hi friends, today I wanted to discuss about the neural control and coordination in uh, human beings. So this chapter con uh, consists of uh, studying about the types of uh, nervous system, the central nervous system, peripheral nervous system and uh, autonomous nervous system. Apart from that we would also be studying about the reflex action or structure of eye, structure of ear, uh, what is a synapse. All that we will be studying under this chapter. So what we do understand is in man and as well as other vertebrates, so all the functions, physiological functions, they are uh, controlled by the nervous and endocrine system. So the system that receives the stimulus and transmits to other parts of the body and the other corresponding effect shown is known as nervous system. The nervous system it performs three basic functions. One, it receives the stimuli through sensory neurons from internal and external environment and it passes to the brain where the input stimuli is processed and then the response is given back to the body parts through the motor neurons. So the stimulus and response, it is because of this effective activity of the nervous system. The nervous system in vertebrates, in invertebrates, if you look into like sponges, they lack neurons. In hydra, all the neurons are linked to one another. You know that hydra belongs to cylindrica. So they are all linked to another, forming a nerve net called plexus between the outer epidermis and inner gastrodermis. In planaria, which represents the ascalmanthus, two nerve cords that converge to form a rudimentary brain. In earthworm, it has a single ventral nerve cord and paired segmental ganglia. The ganglia give rise to the segmental nerves to the tissues. If you look into the nervous system of cockroach, uh, it consists of brain, the ventral nerve cord and ganglia and nerves which arise from the ganglia. The brain or supraesophageal ganglion is made up of three fused ganglia of the head and present above the esophagus. The ventral nerve cord is composed of ten ganglia. The first one which lies just below the esophagus and is known as subesophageal ganglion which is connected to the brain by a pair of sarcoesophageal commissures. The thoracic ganglia are three and six abdominal ganglia of which the last one is larger than the others. Uh, so you, can, you would also be studying this under the type study of cockroach. The nervous system of human being, it consists of the following three major parts. That is the central nervous system, peripheral nervous system and autonomous nervous system. Central nervous system is also called as CNS. Peripheral nervous system is called as PNS. Autonomous nervous system is called as ANS. The central nervous system it comprises of brain and spinal cord and it is the site of information processing unit. The peripheral nervous system it arises from the central nervous system that is the brain and spinal cord. It is made up of three types the somatic nervous system which is voluntary and usually consists of the sensory or afferent neurons that transmit impulses from the receptors to the central nervous system and the motor or efferent neurons which transmit responses from the central nervous system to the effect are which can be the skeletal muscles. The autonomic uh, nervous system is involuntary. It stimulates the glands and other muscles of the body and it is responsible for the involuntary action. The neuroendocrine system it consists of a network of endocrine glands and uh, the hormonal production which is controlled by the central nervous system. So you can look into this diagram, the structure of a multipolar neuron. It has a large number of dendrites and a single axon. So you can see that they have a neuroplasm and neurilemma. The cell wall of the nerve cell, we call it as neurilemma. And the cytoplasm of the nerve cell, you can call it as neuroplasm. The nucleus is prominent. And you have large number of uh, granules distributed within the cyton. Uh, that is the cellular part of the neuron, we call it as cyton. So th they are called as measles granules or digroids. There is a single axon which proceeds downwards and uh, the axons 
uh, if they are covered by the Schwann cells and in between the Schwann cells there is a node of Randwick so the axon proceeds further and it branches to form uh, two of it and the axon terminus ends up with uh, the button like structures which we call it as synaptic nerves and uh, that is the place where synapses occurs so if the axon is covered by the myelin sheet we call it as myelinated nerve and if they are not covered by the myelin sheet we call it as non myelinated nerve so this is the structure of a multipolar neuron that you can see in a human being so the nuclei the cluster or group of neurons in central nervous system ganglia is the cluster of group of neurons in peripheral nervous system nerve tracts the bundle of nerve fibers in central nervous system nerves a bundle of nerve fibers in the peripheral nervous system a typical nerve it has a tough outer covering called as epineurium inside the epineurium axons of nerve cells form bundles called fascicle each fascicle uh, is in turn wrapped with a layer called perineurium the multipolar nerve cells have many short train tracks and one long axon example in cerebral cortex a bipolar nerve cell has a long axon extending on either side of the cell body example in retina pseudo unipolar nerve cells have cell body in a side branch of the main axon the example for pseudo unipolar nerve is cells of dorsal root ganglion now this is a diagrammatic representation of the impulse conduction through an axon at point a and point b so you can see the sodium ion involvement and uh, the movement of uh, from point a to point b the impulse conduction we can notice that so the conduction of nerve impulse across neurons so you can study it under three subheading that is the resting potential action potential and repolarization so in the resting potential the permeability of plasma membrane to potassium ions is greater than its permeability to sodium ions so the surface of axon carries a positive charge relative to its interior so there is a electrical potential difference across the plasma membrane which is called as resting potential and it ranges from minus 40 to minus 90 uh, microvolts so the action potential when a threshold stimulus is applied on the axon membrane depolarization is caused by a rapid change in membrane permeability the membrane now becomes more permeable to sodium ion than to potassium ion the interior becomes electropositive and the ecf becomes electronegative so the depolarization spreads producing the local current which induces the nearby passing sodium ion channels to open and to depolarize the nearby site the last step in nerve impulse conduction of nerve impulse is repolarization after about 0.5 microsecond permeability permeability potassium ion increases because of the build up of positive charge inside the cell and it opens the voltage gated potassium ion channels the movement of potassium ions outwards down their concentration gradient then reestablishes the charge differences that existed before the stimulus occurred the exodus or exit of potassium ions lowers the number of positive ions within the cells and the potential falls back towards the resting potential so the synapse is defined as the functional junction between two neurons the axon of a neuron and the uh, dendron or dendrite of another neuron so types of synapses are electrical and chemical synapses so there are two main types of synapses based on the nature of transformation of information across the synapse it can be either by electrical synapse or chemical synapses in electrical synapse the cells are separated by a gap of 0.2 nanometer synaptic cleft 
so an action potential can sufficiently depolarize the post synaptic membrane in chemical synapses synaptic cleft gap is greater and neurotransmitter substances responsible for the transverse transmission of nerve impulses across the synapse so the conduction of nerve impulses across synapse uh, you can notice in a synapse there is a narrow fluid filled gap of 10 to 20 nanometers called a synaptic cleft the nerve terminal has a bulbous expansion which we call it a synaptic knob or synaptic button which we have noticed in the structure of multipolar neuron in the cytoplasm of the synaptic knob numerous tiny membrane bound synaptic vesicles are present these synaptic vesicles contain as many as 10000 molecules of the neurotransmitter so when a nerve impulse reaches the presynaptic membrane the voltage gated calcium channels concentrated in the synapse open calcium ions from the fluid in the synapse diffuse into the synaptic button and they stimulate the vesicles to move to the terminal membrane uh, which fuses with it and then rupture to release the neurotransmitter the neurotransmitters are going to diffuse to the other side of the gap and combine with specific receptor molecules of the nerve cell and it cause sparking a second electrical current passing its signal so you can notice that axon terminal and synapse so there is an axon and there is a terminal axon terminal so synaptic vesicles are found and uh, there is a presynaptic membrane so the synaptic cleft is noticed and there is a postsynaptic membrane and receptors are there and you can notice within the synaptic vesicles the neurotransmitters that are present so this diagram helps you to understand uh, the synapse that is taking place now the structure of human brain if you take into consideration the sagittal section of brain so many times i have asked the sagittal section of brain for five mark uh, diagram oriented question anyway let us understand the structure of human brain so human brain is covered by a tough tissue covering called as meninges it has three layers which are called as i generally called as the part dap so that is outermost dura mater middle arachnoid mater and inner pia mater so there is also a deep cleft called longitudinal fissures which divides the brain into two halves or the cerebrum into right and left hemispheres the cerebral cortex if you look into the outer surface of cerebrum 2 to 6 mm thick and it is known as cerebral cortex it consists of gray matter that is spindle and satellite neuron cell bodies the surface area of cerebral cortex is increased by numerous infoldings or convolutions which we call it as sulci that is small group so fissure large group and gyri which is the swollen area between adjacent sulci or fissure so two thirds of the surface of the cerebral cortex is hidden in the sulci and fissure so beneath the cerebral cortex a large number of myelinated axons of cerebral cortex neurons from white matter which forms white matter cerebral cortex is a region of various activities and it has three areas namely sensory area motor area and associated area so cerebellum it is the second largest part of the brain it is also known as the little cerebrum and present below the cerebrum it is also made up of two cerebellar hemispheres and has gray matter outside as three layers the outer layer consists of cell bodies the inner layer consists of flash shaped complex neurons which we call it as putti jessens and they have three pairs of bundles of myelinated nerve cell nerve fibers which we call it as cerebellar peduncles which forms a communication pathways between the cerebellum and other parts of the central nervous system so the superior cerebral peduncles connect the cerebellum to the midbrain middle cerebellar peduncles have connection with pons of hindbrain and inferior cerebral 
cerebellar pedunculus which are nothing but myelinated nerve fibers communicate with medulla oblongata and spinal cord cerebellum is a large reflex center and it controls involuntary actions and rapid muscular activities like running talking typing etc and it maintains posture also so nuclei it is a collection of different kinds of neurons in brain basal ganglia it is a collection of subcortical nuclei in the forebrain corpus striatum it is the largest nucleus in the subcortical nuclei and planning and execution of stereotype movements so thalamus it is a region present at the center of the forebrain and it is covered by cerebrum all sensory information they first pass through the thalamus so it receives determines the source evaluates their importance and interprets those sensory signals and then channels them to the appropriate cerebral cortex region hypothalamus is present beneath the thalamus it weighs around 4 g and is highly vascularized it contains the nerve centers for temperature regulation hunger thirst heartbeat and respiration regulation and emotions like anger love coolness etc it has connection with pituitary gland hence it is also controls growth and sexual behavior the limbic system it is a part which connects the cerebrum and the brain stem it signals sends signals to brain and body parts to regulate our behavior so you can see the typical structure of uh, brain the cerebral hemisphere you can notice the corpus callosum cerebral cerebral arc cerebral aqueduct then you notice the pons cerebellum and medulla which we call it as the hind brain so the mid brain consists of uh, the mid brain and hind brain together we call it as brain stem so there is a thalamus and below that you can notice the hypothalamus so cerebrum thalamus and hypothalamus together we call it as four brain so there is this uh, corpus callosum also which you can Okay, so all this labeling are required whenever they ask you for the uh, neat label diagram of sagittal section of human brain. So amygdala it is located above the hypothalamus and it influences behavior and activities so that they are appropriate for meeting the body's internal needs. These include feeding, sexual interest, and emotional reactions such as hunger. So amygdala is hence responsible for controlling our moods hippocampus the swollen lower lip of the limbic fork which involves with learning recognition and memory it also converts short term memory to long term memory hence hippocampus plays a vital role in learning septum is a part of hypothalamus which has a center for sexual arousal so the mid brain consists of four little lobes called corpora quadrigemina it has a pair of superior colliculi which controls visual reflexes that implies to fix and focus on an object and a pair of inferior colliculi which controls auditory reflexes which locates and detects the source of a sound now the brain stem the area between thalamus and spinal cord is known as brain stem and it forms the region of hind brain so the pons it forms the floor of the brain stem and it links the cerebral cortex and cerebellum medulla oblongata it is a posterior most part and reconnects the spinal cord and various parts of the brain this medulla oblongata continues into the spinal cord this brain stem uh, has various reflexes like breathing salivation chewing coughing sneezing etc the reticular formation connects thalamus with major nerves of spinal cord and it is a gatekeeper of consciousness the ventricles of the brain and cerebrospinal fluid there are four cavities in the brain called the two lateral ventricles the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle cerebrospinal fluid fills the ventricles 
and subarachnoid space. So the function of cerebrospinal fluid or CSFS, it contributes to homeostasis that is maintenance of a constant internal environment. It protects the brain and spinal cord as a shock absorbing medium. It gives buoyancy to the brain and reduces the pressure at the price. It helps in nutrition and excretion of the neurons. It transports the hormones to various areas of the brain. The spinal cord it is 42 to 45 centimeter long and 2 centimeter in thick in mid thoracic region and longer in larger in lower cervical and lumbar region. It grows till 4 to 5 years. So spinal cord acts like a link between brain and various parts of the body. If you look into the structure of a spinal cord in a cross section, it looks like a butterfly shaped grey matter in the centre which contains cell bodies and dendrites and synapses. The grey matter has dorsal, ventral and lateral horns. This grey matter is surrounded by the white matter made up of uh, myelinated axons. The lateral nervous system consists of cranial nerves which are 12 pairs. 10 pairs originate from the brain stem. There are three types of central nervous sensory nerves, sensory fibers and uh, mixed nerves and motor nerves. Uh, so one and two is sensory, third and fourth is originates from the brain. So one or three originate from bones, fifth is cranial nerve and uh, ninth and twelfth they originate from medulla. Tenth cranial nerve that is vagus controls and regulates the functions of thoracic and abdominal organs, spinal nerves. All the spinal nerves have mixed nerves. Each spinal nerve has two roots, a dorsal sensory and a ventral motor root. At the middle of each dorsal root is a swelling called as dorsal root ganglion which contains sensory neurons. The motor neurons for the ventral root are present in the grey matter of the uh, spinal cord. Uh, nervous system which is also called as ANS. It functions independently and has two output systems that is sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. So if you compare the functions of sympathetic and parasympathetic you notice that the preganglionic axon which arise from the thoracic and lumbar segment of spinal cord are called as thoracolumbar outflow uh, whereas in the pre parasympathetic nervous system the preganglionic fiber which arise from midbrain and sacral segments of spinal cord so hence they are called as craniosacral outflow the preganglionic fibers are very short and the postganglionic fibers are long in case of sympathetic nervous system the preganglionic fibers are long and the post uh, fibrionic uh, ganglionic fibers are short in case of parasympathetic nervous system. So the autonomic ganglia are interconnected and they occur as two lateral chains, one on either side of the spinal cord. The autonomic uh, ganglia occur individually in the visceral organs or tissues concerned. The post ganglionic fibers they secrete noradrenaline at the synapses, the postganglionic fiber they secrete acetylcholine at the synapse. So the reflex action now next we are going to proceed into the reflex actions are very rapid, involuntary, automatic and stereotyped behavior in which some stimulus evokes a specific short-lived response at the unconscious level. There are more than 200 reflexes which follow the sequence from stimulus to reflex along the neural pathway and they are called as reflex arc. So the components and pathway of reflex arc are arc, arc, there is a receptor, uh, so the messages from the receptor is taken up by the afferent neuron 
and they are taken up by the intermediate uh, uh, neuron and uh, that is the central nervous system and from central nervous system to effector neuron they are taken up to the effector the intermediate neuron is most of the time it is the spinal cord so the messages reflex action arc arc involves the spinal cord so you can just look into a uh, diagrammatic presentation of uh, reflex action showing knee jerk reflex so the stimulus is uh, just a touch of the knee and uh, you can notice the responses that takes place so the muscle spindle or receptor it sends the message through the afferent pathway which is showed in blue color it reaches the dorsal root ganglion and the white matter of the spinal cord and uh, the interneuron from there the message is conveyed back through the more efferent pathway and motor in plant or it is also called as the effector so this is how a reflection action takes place from receptor to the effector involving the spinal cord so now we'll proceed for the next aspect that is the sense organs so we'll be discussing about the structure of human eye each eyeball they consists of three concentric layers the outermost layer is the sclera middle is the choroids and the innermost layer is the retina the sclera in the front it forms the transparent cornea with more curved surface to refract light towards the retina the posterior part of the sclera is tough and elastic and it contains the collagen fibers so you can look into the structure of an eye the cornea is there and it leads to the iris and uh, there is a fluid within this aqueous chamber and there is a hard lens that is found uh, in the eye and there is a vitreous chamber so you can also notice the innermost layer that is the retina <coughs> and there is a <coughs> a furrow like structure called as fovea so the blind spot so there are optic nerves that are arising from the ends of the eye so the choroid layer the sclera is also there and the ciliary body so this is the diagram showing different parts of an eye so it has a cornea which leads into the aqueous chamber and then you can notice the lens that is there so there is a iris uh, in between the uh, lens which opens it up and then there is the screen part of it the retina so inside you notice the vitreous chamber there is a furrow like structure within the eyeball that's the fovea then there is a blind spot so the optic nerves are which are uh, arising and which are exiting from the eye so the choroid layer is there and sclera is also there so the middle choroid is highly vascular and pigmented which prevents internally reflected light within the eye just behind the junction between cornea and sclera the choroid becomes thicker and has smooth muscles in it which forms the ciliary body the iris extends from the ciliary body in front of the lens it contains radial and circular muscles that control the dilation or constriction of pupa the lens is suspended from the ciliary body by suspensory ligaments the lens and the suspensory ligaments divide the cavity of the eyeball into an anterior and posterior chamber the anterior chamber is filled with an aqueous clear fluid that is aqueous humor and the posterior chambers are uh, just gelatinous material that is vitreous humor the innermost layer of retina is composed of several layer of cells the photoreceptor layer contains rods and cones the intermediate layer has bipolar neurons which synapse with retinal ganglion cells and their axon bundles to form optic nerve a tiny circular area called a low spot or macula lutea that acts as a filter over fovea where the vision is the sharpest the place where the optic nerve emerges from the retina 
is the blind spot. The image produced by the lens of the eye on the retina is inverted, but the brain interprets the image in the uh, upright way or the straight way. Now we'll proceed for the next part of it, that is structure of human ear. Human ear it consists of three parts: the external ear, middle ear, and internal ear. So the external ear consists of a sound gathering trumpet which is called as auricle and the external auditory canal. The auditory canal is lined by mesh of hair and sebaceous glands. The sebum and the hair prevent entry of unwanted particles and infection. The tympanic membrane separates the middle ear from the external ear. The middle ear is an ear air filled chamber which is connected to pharynx by eustachian tube. The middle layer uh, lodges three small bones, the ear ossicle, namely malleus, incus and staves. You can remember it as MIS, malleus, incus and staves, which acts as a lever system and increase the force of vibration to transmit it to the endolymph in the inner ear. The middle ear communicates with the internal ear through this oval window. The inner ear has a bony labyrinth inside which a membranous labyrinth is floating in the perineum. The labyrinth has three parts, the semicircular canals, vestibule and cochlea. The cochlea, if you look into it, is a shell-like part composed of three fluid-filled canals, vestibular canal, median canal and tympanic canal that are separated by two membranes, the rhizinous membrane and the Bacillar membrane. The receptors for hearing are tiny sensory hair cells that line the bacillar membrane. They are covered by tectorial membrane. These three constitute the organ of cortile. The sensory hair cells are stimulated by the vibrations of endolymphs which set off nerve impulses to the auditory nerve. So the vestibular system that is semicircular canals, reticular and saccule helps to maintain balance of the body that is orientation, acceleration and rotation to this system. So you can look into the external auditory canal, the pinna and uh, the temporal bone. So the uh, external and uh, middle ear they are uh, separated by this tympanic membrane. So the middle ear has three Bones, that is malleus, incus and staves. So then the internal ear you can see the uh, cochlea, cochlea, nerve. So all these uh, details you can notice in the diagrammatic sectional part of the ear. So this is the diagrammatic representational sectional view of cochlea which has resonance membrane, scala media, organ of cortex, scala vestibuli, tectorial membrane, bacillar membrane, scala tympani. So this is the sectional view of cochlea, enlarged view of cochlea with different uh, zones and areas as well as membranes that we should remember about. So the organ of smell, nose is the organ of smell. Uh, sensation that is olfaction and it contains the olfactory epithelium. The olfactory epithelium has three types of cells. Olfactory bipolar neurons supporting columnar epithelium and the Bowman's glands. Each receptor cell bears 20 or so tiny sensory cilia. Olfactory hair that extends to the mucus. The mucus absorbs the odoriferous substances that stimulate the receptors. The bundles of non-myelated axons of the olfactory receptors, they all unite to form the olfactory nerve. So that is how the sensation of smell is uh, conveyed by all these structures and it reaches the brain. So the organ of taste, tongue is the organ of uh, taste sensation or it is also called as gestation. There are four basic types of taste, namely sweet, sour, salty and bitter, which are detected in the distinct regions of the tongue. The tongue detects the taste through tiny organs, which we call it as taste buds. 
each stage bed contains about 50 gustatory receptor cells. A single gustatory receptor cell is exposed to the external surface through an opening called taste pore. Though each receptor is more responsive to a particular substance, a broad range of chemicals can stimulate it. The brain integrates the differential inputs from various taste buds into a complex flavor. Thank you for uh, listening to the entire topic. So if you want to have more such videos and uh, like and subscribe for this channel, and you can also share it to your friends because once you share knowledge, multiplies your continued encouragement through the means of subscription and sharing is required. Thank you.